Welcome to another edition of the PFRPA podcast special here at the NFL Draft. And today I have a really special guest with me, not a former NFL player, but we're going to talk about the business side of being a retired player with my friend with Trent Dilfer's QBIQ, the owner, Chris Hickson. Chris, how you doing, brother? I'm good, man. Great to be here, Brian. The... The draft, man, it's such an exciting time, and I know you're down here. You've, you're talking. To, you're real close, obviously, with your partner Trent Dilfer and, and John Brinkus of Soul and Science. You know, you've been around a lot of these athletes for a long time. What does draft day mean to you? Well, draft day. It's funny. I saw a social media piece earlier today, and they said, "Oh, so the NFL is dying," and they had a picture. And it was nothing but an ocean of people in Nashville. Yeah. 200,000 people here last night. 200,000 people. That was crazy. It was wall to wall. I thought I'd seen the cement with dents in it because there were so many people out there. But yeah, it's, uh, I mean, obviously the NFL, the draft, it's such an exciting time because you don't know what they're going to pick. Like there were a few curveballs yesterday in that first round, and people were going nuts. They were loving it, some of them hating it. But I thought right, it's exciting, right. man, to watch it. It is. And, and, and for me, my draft day story, I was the 40th pick of the 95 draft, but it, man, it was a really hard day for me. It was, I thought I was, <laughs> you know, I'm one, I was one of those guys that, you know, people were projecting, you know, possible first round pick. And I remember being on the phone f with people from like pick 13 on down. And when I, when the first round was over, I thought I wanted to die because every player has that nightmare, <laughs> yeah. right? You have that, you have that nightmare of, Oh my gosh, I'm going to sink completely out of the draft. <laughs> and here we were right. getting it, just ending round one. And I'm going, Oh my gosh, <laughs> doomsday. You know, what's going to happen? So, right. So let's tell me a little bit about yourself. You, you've been around football for a very long time, your whole life. So, so give us a football background and tell well, me more about that. About that. I, I'd be considered that journeyman, right? I, you know, I, I sat there and I, I started when I was seven, Texas football. I mean, we had electric scoreboard, you know. It wasn't the you know it's normal the real deal in Texas, Texas folks. In Texas football, <laughs> even so, at seven, <laughs> and, oh, it's big time. I remember yeah. we we in Abilene, Texas, we played in Shotwell Stadium. I mean, it was we were yeah. really all you Abileners, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, but it's exciting because um, football. It, it, it number one, you got a, a bunch of dudes trying to accomplish one thing, so that's exciting um, that you get to learn how to work with a group of people. So, anyway, I was in love with it from day one. Um, I. I, in fact, I didn't know I was. It's just what I did. It was like breathing oxygen. So anyway, you especially, know, football. especially in Texas, absolutely. Right? You're growing up. It's one of those things, and people from outside Texas may not get it. Uh, it's almost expected of you if you're born a boy in Texas. It's like you you're playing football, right? It's like the movie it's 300. I mean, you you do you know? It's yeah. either you, you get shipped out of the city, or you're you're a gladiator, <laughs> right, or you're, right? you know, you're a part of the so army. So true. So, so the bottom line is, you know, I sat there and I, I didn't, I, I'm not going to define it was love. I know now that's what it was. It's just what I did. Like I said, it was oxygen. So, and my, my dad didn't really force anything. Uh, he was in big, you know, he was in judo. He's in the Olympics for that and stuff. So he knew sports very, very well. So he sent me to, uh, uh, back in the day, the ASC contact football camp, it was on ESPN as the number one football camp in the country. So anyway, I did that for years and. And football, I was one of the bigger guys. They wouldn't let me play quarterback in the beginning. Yeah. And so, anyway, uh, but I, you know, was, I worked on my craft. That's all I did, you know. Thought I was quarterback, Roger Stahlback. And uh, anyway, so I played, uh, ended up got in high school, and, and uh, I actually went to high school in Seattle. So we moved yeah. out to Seattle. So I had to leave Texas. But uh, we, I played at Bellevue High School. Bellevue High School is commonly in the top five, top ten in the country. Not the past couple of years. But uh, anyway, we're the team who uh, beat De La Salle. Not my, not my year, but it was later. But we're the nice. team that beat okay. in that, that movie. But uh, bottom line is, uh, you know, I went and, and actually played college football at Rhode Island. Um, just got into the Hall of Fame over there uh, two years ago, I think. Nice. And Congrats. Uh, yeah, That's awesome, yeah. And, uh, you know, I tried my hand at, at playing professionally, and I started a family early and kind of, you know, tried to figure things out. And it's, as, a, as a younger guy, you don't know how to be married to both football, and, and I always encourage my guys, stay focused. Yeah. You know, because, yeah, so, so, but I was lucky enough that I was actually, I came back, and uh, after three years of not playing, and I started playing arena football, which was a ton of fun. And um, I remember I, I was playing for Danny White, uh, which is nice. crazy story crazy story um 
my very first NFL game was in Texas Stadium. Was on a th- uh, was on uh, Thanksgiving Day. I think I was seven years old. Okay? okay, my very first game, and I was watching Danny White play John Riggins. So I'm sitting here having a game on NBC. We're doing the pregame conversation with with uh, the broadcasters and from NBC, and the color guy was John Riggins. And here oh, I am nice. playing for Danny White. So, and I, I don't really, you know, ever be like, oh my God, I, here, here's these guys. This was the one moment I was like, dude, this is just a crazy moment. This is my first game. So I had to tell right. John, and right. I, I, before game, I had to tell Danny, and Danny's very stoic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. He's like, thanks, Chris. Thanks for ruining my moment. <laughs> right. <laughs> but anyway, that was the thing. You know, I, and I have had a lot, of, a lot of good things. You know, um, Jim Garrett, you know, tried to get me with Dallas for quite some time, but it's always about timing and different things that happen. Uh, I was going to go out and be uh, with Kansas City for their uh, training camp. I blow out my back. I know you know all about back. I know about that. And, but, yes, yeah, timing, you know, all that kind of thing. So, But I've got a great story, a great thing to pass on to guys. I quarterback train now, and, and uh, that's always fun to send your message out to those guys. So tell me, tell me about what you're doing now with, with Trent and, and Brinkus and those guys. Tell me about QBIQ. So a, a little backstory and evolution on, on QBIQ. Um, I would work with quarterbacks, right? I've been doing it for 10 years and I would watch film. You know, I'd want to go over their game films and, and see what their decisions are. And it just would go crazy in my mind. I'd sit there and say, why are you looking at this for that long, number one? Or number two, if they threw something stupid. I'm thinking, pre-snap, why didn't you know that this was incorrect? And so anyway, I'd start making them say mantras. Like we'd see cover two and I'd say, all right, everybody, repeat, two, four, six, seven, bang, nine. Two, four, six, seven, bang, nine. Those are the routes that work. And so anyway, it just started coming in and we'd start giving more pieces to it, more clues, more hints, and more things to look at. So now that the quarterback is not just sitting there, you know, with things over their eyes, they're actually looking at information in front of them uh, pre-snap because all the information is right. there. So, and Jerry Rice, I love this one. He said about Joe Montana, he said, the reason he's the best is because 98% of the time he knew he, where he was throwing the ball before the snap of the ball. And we're not just talking about hitches. We're talking yeah. about full concepts. Yeah. It, that always amazed me about quarterbacks that, you, were, you know, I, the same thing with, with Brunel uh, experience in Jacksonville of, of just knowing where the ball was going to go most of the time. I think that just amazed me, as, especially as you start getting into the, the complexity of, of the pro game, right, where yeah. everything's coming from everywhere, you know, and just how quarterbacks are, how they study, how they sort that stuff out in right. their heads and know where to go, it, it makes all the difference in the game, right? Absolutely. And I, I think probably the biggest divider – between a Friday Saturday guy and a Sunday guy. The biggest divider is anticipation. It's absolutely 100% anticipation. In Fridays and Saturdays, they're using progression. Okay? And this is the biggest key. S- Sundays, even though the progression is a backbone of understanding the process of that play, it's irrelevant. Yeah. Sunday guys are sitting there going, what's going to work into this pl- uh, this defense? What do I currently have as a play so I know it's this route and this route? And then situationally, is that okay? That's what Peyton Manning's thinking before he snaps his ball. I'm going to change the play. I might even change the formation really quick. You yeah. know, just to give yeah. me a better opportunity at the situational needs. And that's kind of what QBIQ addresses. Not kind of. Is what QBIQ addresses. It closes the gap between Fridays and Saturdays to Sundays. So help me understand this a little bit better. And, and you know, and I, I've – obviously, I know QBIQ well, but I, just from a quarterback's perspective, because mm-hmm. I know – you know, coaching youth league uh, on up to helping friends coach at the high school level, the importance of being to, being able to identify that defensive front right. quickly. Um, traditionally, it's a it's a complicated process with 100%. a young quarterback, right? I mean, it, it is. You know, we'll never get away from all the repetitions, but what. I know that I've seen the process with coaches and it's all week long and you're just banging it out and you're, you're, you're throwing situations at your quarterback and you're trying to confuse them. And then, you, of course, you have your, your whiteboard time where you're trying to throw up different fronts. So where does – that? I think that's the amazing part about QBIQ is, is making that path more efficient, right? I, I think that's really where it's at and looking at this is, is – I'm watching video of guys going through your game system. So QBIQ has been made into a game system, cards, and 
literally flashing up a defense in front of a guy, and he immediately knows where to throw the ball. W- what does that do for the coach? Great question. And we just covered this yesterday with, with Trent. Uh, you know, Trent is now coaching uh, high school football at Lipscomb Academy right here in Nashville. Nice. And we actually had his offensive coordinator on. And that's the number one question I asked him because I, I, I kind of already know the, the answers to these. Right, right. But I like to hear somebody's process through it. Like, what's it doing for him as a coach? It makes his coaching style and coaching progress easier, faster. Um, first of all, you want your kid to know all this stuff, but a lot of these guys, especially in high school, don't know this stuff. Right. They don't. They, uh, it, this is a brand new take on how to look at defenses. Anyway, there's no organized approach that's ever been done this way, ever. That's that's the other thing too, right? Every coach coaches have different ways of coaching that quarterback that sure can lead to some confusion too. Right? Well, you know, I think the biggest thing in high school um, and in college, they're going to put their guy and they're going to say, "Look, on this play, we're looking at this defender." If this defender goes back, we're going to throw here. If he comes up, we're going to throw there. If he gets muddy, hit your check down or hit your backside bread and butter, right? And it becomes, in, it becomes okay, now I'm doing a check system. That's a true progression read. In QBIQ, it's the Sunday take. And what's so funny is it's fundamentals. It's not, you know, big time dynamic, try to, you know, figure out how the, how the world was built. It's literally just fundamentals of how understanding a defense, what do they want to take away, and what are they giving up? And it really becomes glaringly obvious who you're going to throw to. So for, for a coach's perspective, you're giving them back a lot, a lot of time on their hands, right? I think that's and a boost to um, a knowledge base that they probably would not be able to get into. I mean, it's amazing. I'll tell people, uh, like, seriously, go to go to QBIQ.com and go watch some of the videos. You can see them on YouTube as well. But watch some of the videos where, where Chris is literally putting these flashcards up in front of these quarterbacks and see how fast they're calling the route, like the, where they're going with the yeah. ball. I mean, it, it's, it was truly blew my mind because, you know, you think about a normal quarterback, checked in, you know, and their check down process and all of this. And I just think about how awesome that's going to be for my son's quarterback on his team this year. I literally can't wait to implement this because I know it's a problem we had last year. Uh, I mean, for the last two years, I'm drilling this of what you're seeing, right? Is that corner blitz in, right? Are we seeing the strong safety roll over the top? I mean, all these different issues that would lead to confusion for these quarterbacks. So I'm, I'm really stoked about it. So QBIQ... Uh, there's really nothing like it out there on the market. Zero. There's nothing else. I've, I've looked, and <laughs> I can't find them. So to have this package that you offer of this game system in this workbook for a young quarterback that I promise you folks is going to change everything. I've seen it myself working with young quarterbacks. Um, this is a game changer uh, for, for, for that young man, for the coach, for the team. There's so much that's gone into this, and I think that's, you know, why guys like Brinkus, right? So, you know, John Brinkus, most folks know, soul and science, all of that. Um, this, just the science behind it and getting his seal of approval is so massive. It's huge. It's so massive. I mean, a guy like Brinkus is obviously not joining in here to get put his input into the company, put his name on something unless scientifically – it's factual. This is done. That this is the most efficient path no doubt. for a quarterback to learn how to read, <laughs> how to read defenses, right. where to take the ball, uh, and then of course for a truly you know awesome quarterback like Trent Dilfer putting his name on the product. I think that should tell folks a lot about what just what this system is right you get the nfl quarterback with his of course super bowl winning quarterback to put his name behind something like this what what did that mean for you you're you're the owner of the company you know yeah. the ceo of the company uh what did it mean for you to get dilfer and brinkus behind qbiq well it, it's huge and if you look at those two guys you sit there look at brinkus six uh six emmys um yep. he studied over two thousand uh athletes um, he's a you know New York Times bestseller. Uh, he's got a, they have a lot riding 
on what they sign their name to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, Trent Dilfer. I mean, you talk about he is QB Mecca for all quarterbacks in the country or the world. That's QB Mecca. Trent Dilfer's Elite 11, Epic Camp, his analysis, what he does for the NFL and their analysis. Um, he's he's also now on the committee for the youth football program for the NFL. He's reading, uh, you know, with uh, the commissioner last night for dinner and discussing what they're going to be doing. I mean, you're just talking about huge – their decisions on what they'd sign up with or team up with, a lot rides on that. Right. And on my side of things, while that's awesome, when you put things in front of people that are number one in their industries. Right. It gets nerve wracking a little bit because you're waiting for their critical response. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, are you going to like this? <laughs> and um, Trent's response was this. He said, uh, now that especially I'm a high school coach and I've got all these people in the area that come and ask me questions, I realize the requirement for coaches and teams to have this. It is imperative. I did yeah. not know yeah. that the knowledge base was where it was at. I really didn't know that. And I think that's it's probably common with you know guys that have been as successful as Trent, right? You, you mm -hmm. know, you're through college ball and through the NFL, as you can maybe lose a little bit of sight on what these younger guys. And I'm talking from you know even college down through high school and youth football, right? Remembering what they don't know, right? Yeah. Remembering what they don't know because your mind by the time you hit you know any NFL player's level of experience. You know, they, they all have their doctorate in football, so to speak, right? right. So to, to bring it back to understand, I do the same thing with my son, who's an offensive lineman like I was, and in and, and going through just those very basic things and had to come to a point where he doesn't know still. You know, he's in seventh grade now, but just doesn't know some of these things yet. You know, body position, leverage points, and all of those things that – and that's really where, what I equate to QBIQ – that it is, it, it is just that fundamental tool, that foundational tool that every single quarterback in the country, it's, it's a must have. And I think, you know, not only knowing you uh, and all the knowledge that you have poured into QBIQ, but getting Brinkus and Dilfer behind this obviously brings it up a whole new level and adds some excitement, you know, to, to the company, I'm sure. Um, but it, that just says it all for me. Um, and so, folks, if you get a chance, go to QBIQ and go check this out. But the next big step, and one that uh, I'm, I'm particularly excited about, and I think I'm going to mention for the first time on this podcast, that the PFRPA is going off in a whole new industry in June. We're actually jumping big into esports. Esports is one of the most exciting, fastest growing industries on the planet. Esports viewership, to put this in perspective, I read this uh, deal that was put out last year, I believe it was by Nielsen, that e they expected esports uh, viewership to surpass the real thing within a three year time frame, right? That was like in January, February of last year. By December, it was around December time frame uh, of last year. They came out and adjusted it and said it is already surpassed. So esports viewership, and I it, for That's older insane. guys like us, like it's really hard to believe. Like so, somebody's <laughs> watching video games of people playing football more than they're watching the real thing. That's insane. It it is, but it's at literally the way of the world, and, yeah. and it's so. To me, it has been so interesting to watch how how esports has, uh, has grown and how I'll give you a perfect example. My son Enzo is 13 years old and he's been a Madden fan ever since he could play, play uh, the game. Uh, and of course, I believe it was the first year in 95 uh, when Madden came out the first time. I believe that was the first year. And it was in our locker room in Jacksonville. Guys were playing. So that was my first introduction to Madden. So all those years and then here now i am almost 50 years old and playing madden with my son all these years later <laughs> but what's really interesting about this is twofold one he gets all of his football news from this game right injury reports who's winning who's where who got traded it's literally all coming as part of this game that he plays but bigger than that 
for his own personal football dreams is what I couldn't believe the impact it had on his knowledge base of just football knowledge. Right, it blew me away because those games are so much like the now. It's no longer a couple dots on the on the screen. You know what I mean? Do you remember Pong? I'm gonna date myself a little bit here. Of course, you're about. You're, I'm 47. How old are you? I'm 44. 44. So not too Pong, far behind. Right? So Absolutely. Pong literally started out with this little controller that you went side yeah. to side to seeing what we see now in these games. It's like it's incredible. I can't wait to see where it's going to go in the next five to ten years. It's going to be amazing. So, my brother and I were just talking about in television. You yeah, in yeah, television? yeah, yeah. I remember that they had a football game, and it was uh, they had a, a post, a go, and the running back could do a swing. What we would do is we would run option. We would take the quarterback down the line. <laughs> so it wasn't what it was designed for, and then we would pitch. I like, but it's not. It's yeah, yeah, called yeah. a pass in the in television. But in television. we would actually. We, oh my gosh! Yeah, we were just talking about this. At, you know, we were at my mom's. Oh, I got one for you. I got one for you. Do you remember? Um, do you remember head-to-head football? The little handheld. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, Dude, I wore those out when I was a kid. <laughs> I wore, wore them out. Uh, head-to-head the football. Day, I wonder if I can find those anymore. It's got probably somewhere on eBay. This Dude. old head-to-head football. But think about what it was. It was a red dot on a screen. It's insane now. It's insane now what it is. It's, um, I mean, it's so lifelike. They, and I, I've been on the set of when they do that. And it's how many cameras all are all around them so that when the player who's getting the motion capture done turns and it cleans up the, the transition from turn, the more cameras, so it's not twitchy. Oh my gosh. It's yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's unreal yeah. what they do. It, the technology behind and what EA Sports has done for uh, – just for the game itself and the, how lifelike it is. It's, I mean, it, it, one day it's going to be, you know, the holodeck and you're going to be in the game, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's going to be crazy. But I, but as, the, so let me, let me take a step back. Let me talk about this jump into esports real quick. Yeah. And then I want to talk about QBIQ and esports. So the PFRPA is jumping in with our gridiron gaming event that's going to be at the Mecca of eSports, which is the Mavs Gaming Facility in Dallas, Texas. So Mark Cuban took the old Mavericks training facility and built like the most incredible eSports arena you have ever seen. It's, it's amazing. And, and folks that are into NBA 2K, uh, which is awesome too, will we'll know more about Mavs Gaming. So we're having this huge Madden tournament there. Uh, in June 21st, I believe, 22nd, we're on there. I'll, we'll have to put a link down in the description. June 21st, 22nd, we're going to have a Madden tournament. We have all these Hall of Famers coming in. We're going to have a ton of retired guys coming in and some active players as well where guys are going to get a chance. Well, I should put it the other way around. The community, is the fans are going to get a chance to play football against – they're heroes, man. These are awesome. the, the folks they, they awesome. grew up watching. Like, how crazy. I, I, I had this scenario in my head of imagine, even for me and a guy who played, if I had a chance to play in the Madden game against Mike Singletary as Mike's playing the Bears, I'm like, oh, I'm all in that. <laughs> I'm all over it, man. Hey, he, he's going to play the controllers and not blink in the whole game. Oh, see, <laughs> eyeballs. Or it would just be staring at my head, right? <laughs> laser beams drilling through my side of my head um but yeah amazing opportunity we're also going to have uh of course the really other popular games apex legends a tournament we're also doing a Fortnite tournament uh, which is massively it's just it's huge it's going to be a full day full event it's going to be incredible so back to qbiq and esports what's crazy about this is the more realistic the game has become because you're running plays that these teams run. You're looking at the exact same defensive formations and everybody is a quarterback. Yep. Literally QBIQ works for Madden the same way it works on the field. You literally look at that front as a quarterback of your Madden team and you know where to go with the ball. It's 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 exact. Uh, well, first of all, Madden has done such a great job at making the pre and post snap exactly. The post snap reactions are all the same. The pre snap looks are all the same as you're going to see on the field. Yep, they've done excellent. 
at regurgitating the exact same stuff you're going to be looking at right. as a real player. So with that being said, QBIQ is so effective that, I mean, I first of all, I don't know how to play Madden, barely. I know, what, you know, I used to use it on my kid because right. when he wanted to play, I would have to use, I'd pre-snap read and just. But you just knew where the ball needed to go. Exactly, exactly. And in fact, one of our newsletters, I'm going to say this was about 2010, one of our newsletters, I had a kid write a, uh, uh, an article and it was based on, look, parents, I know you don't like Madden, but it's really good for your kid's development. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. <laughs> and he explained it, it, and I was like, that's really well written. And my, yeah, my son, who's an offensive tackle like I was, uh, the fact that he knows offensive and defensive formations mm-hmm. the way that he does now, I, you couldn't. When I was his age, you're looking at the guy in front of you, inside, outside, linebacker. That was the yep. depth of your knowledge in seventh grade, and now he knows these fronts. He's looking at the defense. He's calling out three fours, bears, diamonds. You know what I mean? You know, cover three. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm like, how in the right. world do you know what this stuff is at right. 13 years old? And that's been through Madden. And I think that's the one thing. And I know QBIQ hasn't really gone out and marketed this aspect of it yet. Uh, it's coming. It's coming, right? Uh, but – Man, what that will do, it's also going to change the game for everybody that's serious about winning at Madden. Well, you know what's great? Uh, you, you remember the movie The Matrix? Yep. When you yep. want to learn something. I need, a, uh, <laughs> I need to know how to uh, you know, fly a helicopter. <laughs> download. QBIQ is going to be the download for everybody to be a quarterback for, oh for EA gosh. Sports. Dude, for Madden. Wow. That's how it's going to happen. Dude, you should have heard Trent talking yesterday. He, he said, listen, you know, Trent and John were talking about there's, there's one thing to be – you know, you come out, you're a new new guy trying to figure it out, or you just got your playbook, and it's hard to be super confident and know what you're doing, right? Yeah, and yeah. and elude, elude everybody else. I know, get on my ship. I know where we're heading, like a quarterback should be. Right. Um, it's really hard to do that when you don't know everything. And the quarterback's job is to know everything. You're you're the one stop yeah, shop. You're yeah. the old encyclopedia. If you don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> uh, you, people right. come to you for the information. So, anyway. Um, QBIQ, once you, once you kind of understand it and you know everything, there's this confidence that comes from that, and that grows into command. And Trent talked about what command actually means. When you can command, uh, one, the respect, uh, and you got to know everything to uh, do that, and you got to perform well, you got to have everything down. And QBIQ is going to be a huge part of that process to have command over your team, over the results of games, and ultimately win championships. I mean, I'm telling you, it's that strong. Well, listen, Chris, this has been amazing. Thank you for coming on the show. Uh, congratulations for all your success with QBIQ. It's amazing. I know you have a bright future ahead of you. I'm so excited for you. Uh, but thanks for hanging out with us. I appreciate it, brother. Appreciate you, Brian. Right. Thanks, brother. Thanks, brother.